Hello everyone, my name is Jay Karchi. I'm the community manager at Bandai Namco Games America. We're here at E3 2014 talking about Lords of the Fallen. We have some members of the dev team here. Uh, my name is Tomasz Kopp. I'm an executive producer uh, from CA Games Warsaw. Yeah, I'm Jan Klose from Deck 13, director from Frankfurt. So we are here on the last day of E3. You guys have had a ton of people, a ton of fans, a ton of press come through. Hands on, hands on for the first time, really. So what's been the reaction for the game? It's, I think it's been pretty good. What have you guys been seeing? Pretty good. It, it's been really, really good. And I don't want to exaggerate. It's been uh, the most important thing is we definitely wanted to make sure that people have fun with the game. But at the same time, there were a lot of people who doubted whether this game is actually genuinely challenging. And I think that came out pretty well, didn't it? Yeah. You guys had quite a difficult slice there. So, what about the? This is the first time some people are seeing kind of like up close the graphics, the art style. Um, what do you think uh, people? What have people been saying about that? Well, I think they were pretty amazed by it. Um, so at least that's what we get out of it. And uh, what we like about it is that they say it's something unique. It's not so generic. They 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 can can see some special art style in there, and this is what we really really liked. So I think we we like hit the spot there more or less, and and we hope this is going to shine through also in the in the complete game when people see it. What would you? Uh what would you say were some of the influences of this of this game and the kind of the design, the mechanics? Are there any games that you would point out as influencers? Sure, name any challenging game. A lot of people, of course, are referencing to Souls. I understand that, but it's it's pretty much any challenging game. If you think about the the most important thing that is the reason why people play challenging games, the reward, the satisfaction, the feeling of progression, we we definitely think Lords is after the same thing. But what is different about Lords is we're trying to sort of bring it in a bit smoother way because a lot of people think that challenge is awesome but mainstream players don't have the patience don't have the time to get there and we're trying to you know make the path a little bit even on Lords of the Fallen and, and the challenge is the same level but we try to remove the frustrating elements very cool so I don't think we've heard very much about some of the RPG elements of the game we've seen some beautiful screens we've seen some great gameplay but I don't think too many people know that much about some of the RPG mechanics. Well, can you pick one or two of those and tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, sure. The storyline in Lords of the Fallen is being, is being told throughout uh, different means. One of them is the, 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 the most popular, the most obvious one, like trying to put uh, cinematic experience over here or there, try to make dialogues that actually have choices and trying to make the player steer uh, the, the storyline and it branches in certain places. So there are ways that are very natural for players to get into the uh, ending of the game, one of the endings of the game actually, because the storyline does branch and we have more than one ending. But also apart from that, very important element of this is trying to find out more about the lore, a lot of the optional stuff and trying to find details about it. Uh, you can actually find a lot of the audio notes scattered across the whole world and they are written by a lot of inhabitants of that world and they give you the uh, sort of overview of what the world is, what the world's story was and if I was to describe in a short way is I think that there's a lot of depth in Lords of the Fallen, in, in the world of Lords of the Fallen, the story and in what, what, what created this whole world. And for everybody who's going to be trying to dig deeper, it's going to be quite easy to connect the dots and join the parts. It's not too hidden. There's people out there like myself who like these games because of the, the loot or the, the skill trees or the armor sets. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Give us, give us some teasers. Yeah, the, the character development in Lords is pretty much split into, I mean, it's, 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 it's a, let's say, artificial split, but it, it's generally split into three pillars. Uh, the, the, if you want to bump up your stats, uh, there are five or six, I don't remember exactly, of them, like strength, like agility, and, and uh, magic. Uh, and, and these, and you can you can decide how you go uh, from from the game. You can decide how you develop them. It's 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 not bound to the class in any way. Uh, there there is magic. There's supernatural skills. Each class that you choose, and this is actually bound to the class. This is locked down once you choose the class of magic at the beginning. And these are uh, these are different types of magic that you could be using. Like for example, the cleric type of 
uh, class was probably going to be using regenerative magic. Uh, Rogue is going to be using very fast and critical assassination style. Warrior is going to be just brawling and tanking through the game and so on and so on. And um, the last part, and I think the most interesting, definitely most complex one, is the gear. Uh, the armors, the shields and the weapons. Uh, all of these are, there's quite a lot of them, there's around 100 of weapons that you can find in the game, apart from, from the armors. Uh, armors are, are sets, so we can mix and match if you want to, parts of different armors. And interesting thing is, on top of that, you have crafting. So there, some of the, the elements of the gear you can actually craft, you can modify it. There are magical runes that you can imbue in, in, the, in the gear that has slots. Some of them, them do, and you can, you can, you know, you can enhance it further. And that's not the only thing. The, apart from that, some of the gear have perks, like unique, you know, special abilities. There's a sword that when you hit the ground, uh, the normal version is just just super strong attack, but the perk version will send a shockwave. You know, yeah. stuff like this. So, so Lords of the Fallen is coming out for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. So, what kind of challenges, uh, comments do you have about working on next-gen platforms? This is your first next-gen game, correct? Yeah, this is the first next-gen game that both CA Games and Deck 13, so co-development, uh, are doing right now. But um, I don't think there is anything uh, that that you might not have heard of yet or so far. Uh, I think that the biggest challenge in producing the game, especially for Xbox One and PlayStation 4, is that we're quite early on in the life cycle of these platforms. So. Uh, it's good that they are way closer to the PC that they were in a previous generation, but at the same time, all this certification, all this, uh, you know, the, 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 the process of trying to get the game through the certain requirements of the, of the producer, which is good because this game has to be compliant, but generally, this is a fresh kind of process. This is early on, and this is probably the, the biggest challenge right now. Still, I'm not saying it's, it's a tremendously huge one, but if I had to select something and extract something as the most outstanding, this would be the one.